you're at the high nibble for the more significant bits. In video number three, I demonstrated or gave an overview of all the features of the IMSE 8080 replica desktop user interface. In this and the next few videos, I'm going to be doing a, more of a deep dive into each of the virtual devices available through the desktop user interface. This video will focus mainly on the TTY or serially connected uh, terminal available through the desktop UI. When I first chose the ESP32 microcontroller for this project, I always wanted to have a web browser based terminal to connect to my replica over Wi Fi. To help with this, I chose the Xterm.js library. You can find out more about this JavaScript library at xterm.js.org, and I'll provide links to that and the GitHub repository in the description below. This is the same terminal library that Microsoft use in their Visual Studio Code IDE. So let's boot the IMSA 8080 replica into CPM. And as demonstrated before, we can go ahead and issue standard CPM commands through this virtualized serially connected terminal. Of course, if we look at something much longer, like typing out a source file, one of the immediate advantages of this TTY device compared to devices of the era is that it provides a very large scroll history. So we can scroll all the way back through that source file and browse what we need to uh, without any problems. Some of the other things we inherit immediately from being browser-based is uh, the ability to zoom in on the desktop user interface and zoom out. And I've also included a full screen mode for the TTY virtual device. You can reach that by clicking the glyph in the top bar of the window and go full screen. And there's also a keyboard shortcut of either option escape on a Mac or alt escape on a Windows device to toggle between full screen and windowed mode. In windowed mode, when other windows are open, there's full window uh, stacking. So you get the window in focus moves to the front of the stack and each window comes with a minimized bar in the top corner. The next glyph to look at at the top of the window is the little green um, power plug. This indicates that we're connected to the web socket back on the ESP32. When the ser virtual serially connected device uh, is connected to its web socket, then it has control over the console and no serial data is transmitted over the UART. When we disconnect from the web socket, now console control returns to the UART. So if you have a serially connected or USB connected terminal uh, plugged into the ESP32 microcontroller, then that will have the serial console until we reconnect the web socket. And now control would transfer back to this virtualized serially connected terminal. The other two glyphs are just for convenience and they relate to keyboard control and especially the behavior of control keys. Although this is emulating a VT100, many applications under CPM aren't programmed to correctly recognize standard ANSI or VT100 arrow keys. So when this glyph is illuminated, which it currently is and is by default, then uh, the arrow keys transmit the traditional uh, control S, D, E and X uh, control sequences that are used to navigate through a lot of CPM applications. So I'll demonstrate this by changing into SuperCalc 2. So at the moment I'm navigating around the spreadsheet using the traditional control character uh, key sequences. So control X for down, control E for up, control D for right, control S for left. And in this virtualized serial terminal, I've mapped the arrow keys to send the same escape sequences. 
So that way the arrow keys can be used and made to work with most CPM applications. If an application does have correct VT100 key mappings, you can turn that off and now the arrow keys will tr uh, transmit the proper VT100 sequences, which in this case SuperCalc2 is configured to pay attention to as well. So in fact I'm using the arrow keys now to navigate between the cells and it's also working. The button next to it acts like a sticky control key. So um, you'll notice you get the little uh, yellow chevron like the control carrot and now I can press the X, E, S and D keys on the keyboard without touching the control key and still get um, control key navigation in an application like this. This was a little bit of an experiment to try and make uh, the desktop UI available through a tablet, particularly an iPad, and it worked very effectively to be able to run applications in this virtualized serial terminal uh, from, an I from the browser on the iPad where there was no access to a control key and using the little sticky um, control key button glyph here in the top bar, I was able to navigate. The final demonstration I'll give is to uh, show some um, VT100 screen art from the time. And this will give you a demonstration on how well this terminal emulates a VT100. So that's a pretty solid VT100 emulation. For those of you familiar with this demonstration, you will have noticed, however, that there wasn't support for double width or double height characters. But for most applications running under CPM, certainly uh, this virtualized serially connected terminal gets the job done. If you haven't already subscribed to the High Nibble, can I please invite you to click on the subscribe button below, and that way you'll be able to keep up to date with when I release new videos showcasing the other virtualized uh, devices on the desktop UI, and later on when I start to release the construction videos for the IMSE 8080 replica.